Thank you, Elikia, and welcome, everybody. Um, very excited to be here uh, today. Um, so welcome to today's WACA Innovation Award Ceremony. Uh, so as Elikia mentioned, this uh, webinar will be mostly in English, but we have uh, French and English to simultaneous translation. Um, I'm kindly asking speakers to, when they speak, to speak close to their mic and relatively slowly so the interpreter can do their job at the, at the best possible way. So my name is Maria Saraf. I'll be your host today. I'm happy to co-host this event with my colleague Aurelio Menendez. I'm the practice manager for environment, natural resource management, and the blue economy in West Africa and responsible for the WACA program. Before we start, I would like to thank the incredible team that has been working around the clock to make this event possible. Majdi Sek, Elikia Abraham, Peter Christensen, Sergio Valesi, Germaine Mama, and Teddy Sondota. And of course, our World Bank, fantastic World Bank IT team. I'd also like to thank our two main sponsors for the event, the Nordic Development Fund and QII. We're here today because the coast of West Africa is under severe st stress even though the coastal area generate over 40% of countries' GDPs on average and hosts about one third of the population, they're facing severe erosion. A recent World Bank study estimated that flooding, erosion, and pollution in Benin, Côte d'Ivoire, Senegal, and Togo alone, in four countries alone, cost about $4 billion in damage, $4 billion in damage every single year. That's huge. This year, the call for innovation focuses in the, on the impact of large commercial ports on sediment movement and coastal erosion. We have launched this call to encourage candidates to find innovative and feasible solution to coastal erosion. Today's program includes great speakers that will surely inspire us all to innovate, empower, and transform coastal livelihood. A couple of more logistical uh, reminders. Please send us, we have over 100 participants uh, and growing by the second. So for all of you participating, please send us your question, your feedback in the chat box and we are monitoring and answering as fast as we can to the chat uh, discussion. Uh, and I wanna re remind everybody that the session is being recorded and will be available on the WACA website. Let me now introduce our first speaker, Debbie Wetzel. Debbie is the World Bank Director for Regional Integration for Africa. She has more than 25 years of experience in development work around the world. Debbie was a senior director for governance at the World Bank and the country director for Brazil. Debbie, over to you. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody on the call. It's great to see lots of participants here for today's event. It's an honor to be here for the kickoff of the award ceremony for the call for innovation under the WACA program. Um, many of you will know that the World Bank's goals are about poverty eradication and shared prosperity. And you may know that our, our signature program, Ida 19, focuses on five special themes, climate change, fragility, conflict and violence, gender, governance, in, governance and institutions, and jobs and economic transformation. So the resources that we have to support uh, low-income countries are really meant to build around those five themes. Less well-known is uh, that for us to achieve many of these goals, we really do need to have a strong program on regional integration and that it is an important part of how we can achieve those goals. Um, the reason really relates to many of the issues that were, were raised in the preceding videos. A lot of the issues that we deal with are ones that know no borders. The, the, the most prominent example at this instant in time is pandemics. We know that pandemics are not something that has a passport, they don't stop. And so our regional integration programs help, helps to work on those issues. But coastal resilience, of course, is another one. And as we saw in the video, issues around coastal erosion, issues around um, delivery chains for, for uh, sea supplies and, and, and fishing and those types of livelihoods and activities. Everything is interdependent and um, countries really need to work together uh, to, to manage these issues that cut across borders. Uh, and among those prominently is coastal resilience. 
We know that the regional institutions in West Africa are particularly well suited to address the challenges of coastal resilience. Um, institutions such as WAMU, ECOWAS, and ECAC on economic affairs. And, and we have some important agreements, Abidjan Convention, uh, in which countries committed to implementing protocols on mangroves, on pollution, oil and gas, and coastal zone management more broadly, are important tools that we have to try to address some of the problems that we're confronting. However, to have a transformative effect, we really need to work to support these institutions in ensuring regional coherence, and also to make sure that the countries themselves are stepping up and looking at things through a regional lens and supporting regional institutions. We've been doing a lot of work on this front. A good example, uh, even before the World Bank joined the current initiative, is the observatory, um, which uh, most recently issued the 2020 State of the Coast Report. It's the first time we get a full picture of the health of the coast as a whole across West Africa. So important institutions exist and we wanna make sure that we're supporting them. Uh, my hope is also that countries will step up and take a look at how they can support sustainable solutions in protecting the coast. Often they look in a very focused way at the particular country initiatives, but bringing together the activities of the different countries is critical. Um, but we also, in the current context, need to look for new ideas and new solutions, which is why what we're doing today is so important. Um, the call for innovation is really an outreach to folks on the ground to be able to present ideas, to bring different angles to regional institutions, and to share innovations with us on the use of technology and innovation that can help us perhaps leapfrog uh, over certain issues and stay ahead of the curve in terms of the issues that we're confronting. Um, I've been involved with WACA for a, a little bit under two years, and it really is an essential mechanism to help establish uh, possible solutions, attracting finance, engendering new ideas and approaches, and, and really putting it all together to make those add up to, to responses that are, are broader, uh, more transformative, and more effective. Um, these types of solutions are essential if we're going to continue to attract finance and achieve the development goals that we're hoping to attain. Um, as I prepared for this event, I was looking on the website and every time I, I look at the, the WACA work, I'm struck by how many donors are involved, the depth of their engagement, the depth of the knowledge that the donors bring to the table in terms of their own experiences and knowledge and, and and how they can help us think forward. And so um, I'd like to offer our gratitude to the donors for all that they have put into the, to the WACA initiative, both in terms of financial resources, but more importantly, in terms of substance, the knowledge that they bring. Um, and it'll be really useful to hear their own perspectives on, on some of the innovations we're gonna hear about today. Uh, so, uh, I'm excited to hear about the ideas and the innovations that the, the participants in the challenge will present to us. And let me turn it back to Maria to, to start with uh, those presentations. Thanks to you all for participating. Uh, look forward to next time when we can meet in person. Uh, but for now, thanks for, for, for plugging into our event today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Debbie. Let me now introduce our second speaker who is joining us from Abidjan, Professor Oshu. Professor Oshu is the WACA project coordinator for Côte d'Ivoire at the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development. He is also a professor of physics at the University Félix Oufouet Beni in Côte d'Ivoire. Professor Oshu, over to you. Merci beaucoup. Mesdames et Messieurs les responsables nationaux et régionaux de la Banque mondiale, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres du jury et les candidats à l'appel à l'innovation, chers invités, chers participants, c'est un honneur et une joie pour moi de prendre la parole ce jour à l'occasion de la cérémonie de remise de prix de l'appel à l'innovation pour trouver des solutions innovantes et applicables pour la lutte contre l'érosion côtière. 
avant tout propos, je voudrais, au nom de mes homologues de Waka et de l'UMOA, exprimer notre profonde gratitude à la Banque mondiale pour son appui technique et financier dans la recherche de solutions idoines et durables dans la lutte contre l'érosion côtière en Afrique de l'Ouest. Mon pays, la Côte d'Ivoire, comme ses voisins, souffre depuis plus d'une décennie des effets néfastes de l'érosion côtière exacerbée par les changements climatiques mettant en péril le fort potentiel socio-économique, environnemental et culturel qu'offrent les zones côtières. Si rien n'est fait, la vulnérabilité des infrastructures socio-économiques, des ressources naturelles et des populations côtières ne fera que s'accentuer et entraîner une perte de plus en plus accrue des richesses de nos pays. En effet, nous en avons déjà la preuve avec la disparition progressive du village de Laopanda et ses sites de sépulture. Nous savons également que la dégradation côtière a coûté environ 5% du PIB, chiffre de 2017 de la Banque mondiale, principalement en raison des inondations, comme nous les voyons à Grand Bassam, Grand Laou et ailleurs. C'est un témoignage de la destruction de la côte non gérée pour un pays comme la Côte d'Ivoire. En prenant encore l'exemple de la Côte d'Ivoire que je connais mieux, il est important de préciser que le littoral est un énorme atout économique avec ses lagunes, îles barrières, mangroves qui attirent nos touristes, mais aussi avec ses deux grands ports et bien d'autres infrastructures socio-économiques. Cet environnement côtier est aussi caractérisé par un système hydrologique complexe où tout changement dans les dimensions des canaux ou des zones humides peut avoir des impacts à des dizaines de kilomètres. Mesdames et messieurs, chers participants, face à de tels défis, l'on peut se réjouir des initiatives prises par lui et moi, l'IUCN, la Convention d'Abidjan, le CSE pour la mise en place de multiples initiatives et protocoles depuis plus d'une décennie. À saluer encore plus est l'avènement du projet WACARESIP pour renforcer la résilience de la côte ouest africaine. Toutefois, dans la recherche des solutions, l'un des défis de la protection et de l'aménagement côtier consiste à définir le meilleur compromis possible entre les impératifs de la prévention des risques et de la protection de l'environnement d'une part et les impératifs tout aussi pressants du développement d'autre part, dont le rythme sera largement imposé par les dynamiques démographiques. Mesdames et messieurs, chers participants, au vu de ce qui précède, nous pouvons affirmer que ça, cet appel à l'innovation est important pour nous. Nous avons souvent une approche fragmentée du conseil technique et nous ne sommes pas toujours sûrs que la solution que nous avons en tête capitalise sur les leçons et les nouvelles technologies. De plus, nous n'avons pas toujours un accès facile aux solutions. Par ailleurs, en tant que professeur, je tiens à ce que nous engagions nos jeunes et nos étudiants au premier stade des études et des innovations. Nous devons accélérer le transfert des compétences et des connaissances. Et j'espère que le nouveau Centre d'excellence africain pour la résilience côtière, dirigé par mon collègue le professeur Aeto de l'Université de Cape Cos au Ghana, à qui je rends hommage, nous permettra d'y parvenir. Mesdames et messieurs, chers participants, il est important de savoir que dans la problématique de la gestion intégrée des zones côtières, le secteur privé est essentiel. Aussi, le présent appel à l'innovation est-elle une bonne continuation du travail que nous avons accompli pour impliquer le secteur privé ici en Côte d'Ivoire et collaborer avec l'Association de gestion des ports d'Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre À ce stade de mon propos, l'on pourrait se demander à quoi 
ressemble réellement une solution pour les communautés locales. Eh bien, à grand Laou, au sud de la Côte d'Ivoire, les interventions dans le cadre du projet Waka comprennent la réhabilitation et le reboisement des mangroves du complexe lagunaire, mais aussi les actions de conservation du parc national d'Azani et du parc national des îles Éotilé, placé sous la gestion exclusive de l'Office ivoirien des parcs et réserves. Nous pouvons ainsi affirmer que la nature fait partie intégrante des solutions. Comme on peut le comprendre, les solutions recherchées doivent être grises, vertes ou mixtes. C'est en cela que nous avons hâte d'entendre ce que les innovateurs vont nous proposer ce jour. Mesdames et messieurs, chers participants, au nom de l'équipe Waka, je félicite à l'avance les heureux récipiendaires et déclare ouverte la cérémonie de remise des prix de l'appel à l'innovation. Je vous remercie pour votre aimable attention. Merci beaucoup, cher professeur Ochou. Uh, I will now uh, turn to my colleague, uh, Peter Christensen, uh, who will present to you um, a very brief presentation about the WACA program and the call for innovation. Uh, Peter is the lead environment specialist in West Africa. He's also the program coordinator for WACA. Peter, over to you. Uh, Peter, I don't think we can hear you. I think you can hear me now if I yes, turn the perfect. microphone on. Okay, yeah. that helps. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We will start with this beautiful slide from Ghana, where you see a healthy and productive coast. It looks stable. There's livelihoods. Next. It is not always like that in West Africa. We have areas that are impacted by coastal erosion. This is the image of the port of Nouakchott, where you see that the port, a large infrastructure on the coast, has caused an accumulation of sediment upstream and erosion downstream. Erosion also happens because sand is taken for construction, habitat loss, and other effects. And of course, climate change exacerbates the whole dynamic. If no one lives where the uh, erosion is happening, it may be okay, but it's not always like that. Next. Here is a family in Senegal and Barnier that has been impacted. It has lost its house and its livelihood and are under threat. Next. The cost is also to the countries, as Maria said before, almost 5% of the GDP for four of the countries. Next. It is complex. It is multi-sectoral. You have to have many ministries involved. It's a technical challenge. You need innovation. It, rely, it requires a long-term commitment from all of us to help the countries. No one can do it alone. Next. So we created WACA. So it is a regional program integrating with uh, the regional institutions. In each country, there's a number of activities for technical assistance, building the capacity, and the site interventions, for example, dune protection, but also hard solutions like groins and beach nourishment. Next. So how do we get to scale? Well, we set up what we call the WACA platform. It aims to facilitate the access to knowledge from West Africa or from international partners to simplify the process for accessing finance. And the money doesn't have to go through the World Bank. It, everyone can use their own mechanism and it supports the dialogue. So in red, I have three examples I'll pull out today on the dialogue to the right, local action as was mentioned as a, as an, uh, by the earlier speaker, the community is really important to engage. On the finance, we set up a finance marketplace that we tested last year 
and that was very successful in mobilizing both specific finance and technical assistance. And today we are piloting the call for innovation. Today it's about ports, but it could be other calls for innovation in the future, for example, on plastic next. Partners are essential, as I mentioned. So for each of the areas, we have already partners on board that have helped do upstream technical assistance or provided finance or are helping in any way they can uh, as per their programs. Next. And what does solutions look like? Well, here's one example from the southern part of Senegal. The tourism industry in the upper left picture was threatened by the loss of beaches, which is the main attraction. And to the lower right, you see a couple of years later that infrastructure has been put to protect the beach and the image here shows the result before the beach nourishment, which has happened uh, subsequently. Next. In this case in Benin, we helped the communities of a town to prevent flooding by uh, managing the barrier island and also like on the picture here, replanting mangroves. Next. So the call for innovation, what is it about? Let me just pull out the slide here so I can read it easily. So we asked these four questions to the public, to innovators, to companies, or whoever has experience in these areas. Which type of infrastructure and financing mechanisms could be put in place to manage the impact of port development and port management on sediment movement, which leads to unwanted coast erosion? The second question was, which infrastructure planning measures could be put in place upstream to reduce environmental impact, coast erosion, and lagoon and canal water flow in particular? The third one was, which kind of public-private partnerships could be established to mobilize finance or new ways of contracting to make the whole mechanism work sustainably? And fourth, what are examples of good practices in port management that could be proposed to the West African countries to better manage the cumulative impact? Next. So we received 22 proposals. 12 of them were long listed based on criteria. And then we came up with a short list of five. Then we had a high level jury that looked at these five and ranked them and we have three winners that we will see later today. Next. So the criteria for, elevate, for the evaluation, there were six of them. It is about innovation, of course, but it's also about feasibility and the adaptability to the national context, the impact it could have, the co-benefits, and also readiness for implementation. Next. So how will we then use these innovations? Well, in West Africa, we have worked with the uh, Port Management Association to, on the idea of developing a charter that would put the ports at the same level of standards. This is a mechanism to prevent that everyone is underbidding each other on contracts and thereby uh, risk of uh, neglecting environmental and social impact. The idea is to have this as a participatory process and have a third party verification on how the ports are performing. So that is a, is a big vehicle. And we are working, as I said, with the Port Management Association and also with uh, the companies that are managing the ports. And next. And my turn to say thank you to all the partners that have worked with us on this program. Thank you. Over to you, Maria. Thank you very much, Peter, for a very clear presentation. And uh, now let me turn over to Benoit Bosquet, um, who will introduce uh, to us the member of the jury who have been working very hard uh, yesterday to come up and select the best proposal, which I understand was not an easy task. Benoit is the Regional Director for Sustainable Development in East Asia and the Pacific region. Before that, Benoit was the manager of the Environment Group in West Africa and one of the pioneers of the WACA program. So many of you probably already know Benoit. So Benoit, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Maria. Uh, and uh, thank you for the invitation to chair this jury 
Um, let me also take uh, the opportunity to, to say hello to the whole WACA community uh, gathered on Zoom today. I miss it. Uh, I recognize uh, many champions of the early days, including uh, Professor Rochou. Uh, bonjour, Professor. Uh, and also allow me to honor the memory of uh, the Honorable uh, Jean Jaya, the late uh, mayor of uh, uh, Grand Laou in Côte d'Ivoire, whom we saw in the video and uh, who left us uh, a couple of years ago. He too was a champion. Now, let me introduce the jury. Um, it consisted of three World Bank uh, managers and three uh, partners. So uh, you've heard the, um, uh, my name and my uh, function. Um, uh, beside uh, myself, um, Fatouma Touré Ibrahima, uh, Ms. Ibrahima, who is a practice manager for the private uh, public uh, partnership group in the World Bank, was a jury member, uh, as well as Mr. Ibu Diouf, a practice manager for uh, transport. Um, and then we had three important uh, external members of uh, the jury, external to the World Bank, very important partners, Mr. Jean-Marie Kofi, the Secretary General of the West Africa Port Management Association, Ms. Karin Isaacson, the managing a director of the Nordic Development Fund, very important early uh, funder and partner of uh, WACA who made this um, uh, call for innovation uh, possible as you heard uh, from uh, Maria early on and Mr. Klaas Jan Bos, engineer manager at uh, Royal Van Oort in the Netherlands. So let me just uh, uh, invite the jury members to say a couple of uh, words and then I will give you a synthesis of our discussion. So uh, Fatuma, would you like to come in first? Benoît, I think Fatuma could not join us for a last minute. Uh, so maybe we can move on to Ibu. To Ibu, yes. Ibu, are you connected? Can you hear me? Oh, maybe we have an issue there as well. I would then turn to Mr. Kofi, Jean-Marie Kofi. I'm not sure if we are experiencing. Ah, Miss, Monsieur Kofi. Merci à vous, Madame Sarah. Oui, uh, je pense que si vous m'entendez. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, parfait. Alors, je voudrais vous dire merci. Merci à la Banque mondiale. Merci au programme WACA pour cette opportunité que vous nous avez offerte de non seulement travailler avec vous, mais aujourd'hui pour chercher donc des solutions et de nous permettre donc de siéger au sein donc de ce jury pour valider donc les opérateurs, j'allais dire des opérateurs qui ont des solutions à nos problèmes réels. Oui, je pense que vous avez compris de ce que Dans votre priorité, vous avez placé des priorités, des priorités, les ports qui sont donc des vecteurs économiques. Et donc, si ces vecteurs économiques disparaissent, c'est toute l'économie de la région qui va donc disparaître. Aujourd'hui, ce sont des solutions qui seront donc proposées. Il revient donc à nous de prendre donc le relais et de sensibiliser donc nos ports et nos États à faire en sorte que la pression qui est déjà sur la ville, la ville sur les ports, soit résorbée, mais mieux, la pression de la mer, donc sur l'activité portuaire que soit résorbée. Et donc, c'est cela l'enjeu, l'enjeu principal. C'est pour cela que je voudrais vous dire donc, merci. Merci de nous avoir accompagnés techniquement donc, dans cette solution que nous recherchons depuis toujours et faire en sorte que l'activité de notre sous-région vive en collaboration réelle avec donc, tous les autres ports de notre littoral parce qu'il ne s'agit pas d'un port tout seul, il s'agit des autres. En amont, on peut trouver une solution et dans cette collaboration, on peut commencer par quelque part et donc l'influence qui devait donc éroder donc la côte d'un autre pays pourrait donc diminuer suffisamment et c'est cela. Et mieux, du fait donc de notre économie un peu tributaire de l'activité donc portuaire, il est bon de chercher donc des solutions, euh, j'allais dire des soft solutions, pour essayer donc de minimiser donc les coûts 
quant à la gestion donc, de l'érosion côtière. Je voudrais donc vous dire merci. Merci de cette collaboration et que je pense que ça ne s'arrêtera pas d'ici peu. Infiniment merci. Merci, Monsieur Kofi. Uh, let me uh, invite uh, Ms. Isaacson to say a few words. I, now I think you can see me and uh, uh, greetings from Helsinki. Uh, on behalf of NDF, we're very happy to participate in this event and uh, also we're taking in consideration that, as you said, we've been part of the WACA program already from the start. This uh, aligns uh, very well with our strategy to uh, go in early stage. We participated even in the structuring of the program but also to provide uh, catalytic financing. So we're also an investor in the program as such. Uh, so great to be here. And uh, also on a personal note, uh, this uh, activity is very close to my heart, having spent uh, three years as executive director in the African Development Bank living in Abidjan. So uh, I think I really uh, understand some of the challenges and uh, we're very, very happy to contribute to mitigate these uh, if possible. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Karen. And uh, last but not least, uh, Klaas. Benoit, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. This is Ibu. I have been struggling with my microphone, but oh, now- Oh, sorry, Ibu. So, so why don't you quickly introduce yourself since you have the floor before we turn I to class? Sorry again, I could hear it clear and loud, but I, my microphone could not reach out to you. Thank you very much, uh, Bonnois and uh, the Waka team, uh, Maria and uh, Christensen as well, Peter, for inviting me to join this uh, call for innovation. And of course, I, as I said, uh, as a transport professional, this is a topic of great interest for the sector and of course for myself. And I'm very happy really to have been a part of this, witness this uh, innovation, because in my earliest uh, work as TTL in the region, I really witnessed the erosion in, in Western Africa, the coastal countries, in particular the case of Mauritania. When Peter projected this peak, uh, photo, it was really speaking to me. So thank you very much, and I look forward to getting a chance to collaborate with Waka and get to implement some of this very innovative solution. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you, Ibu. Thank you very much. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Klaas. Yes, thank you, uh, Benoit. And uh, thanks to the World Bank and partners for organizing this important call for innovative solution regarding coastal management for West Africa. It was great to see the uh, variety of solutions that were submitted in response to this call. And uh, I really look forward to seeing these solutions to materialize in the region in the, in the near future as a follow-up to this call. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Klaas and uh, all my fellow uh, jurors. So let me just say a few words uh, and then I'll turn it back to Maria. So the jury had a, a rich discussion yesterday. Um, different jurors had different views of the five uh, shortlisted proposals, which was expected given uh, our different areas of expertise. I would say we saw two main thrusts in the way we assessed the proposals. Some of us focused more on the technical features of port design and operation in the proposals, while others perhaps gave more importance to the softer uh, planning aspects. But we all used the same unweighted criteria, namely innovation, feasibility, adaptability to national contexts, expected impact, environmental and social co-benefits and implementation uh, readiness. In the end, the jury uh, came up with its verdict and the top three uh, finalists as was expected from us. And in addition, we discussed ways of recognizing the other two proposals, which entailed important innovative elements. And we made some suggestions in this respect uh, to, the, to the WACA uh, program 
uh, management team. So this was it uh, for us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and over to you, Maria. Thank you so much, Benoit, and to all jury members for your very hard work yesterday. So let me turn over now to the five shortlisted candidates. Each of them is going to give a very brief, maximum five minute lightning presentation on their uh, idea. I will start with the first proposal that was uh, prepared by a team of three firms. Eric Fernagu will be making the presentation on behalf of the team. Eric is a marine hydraulic engineer at the port division of Aegis. The proposal is entitled TransSand, Transnational Bypass Scheme funded by a public-private dredging fund. Eric, over to you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Masters of Ceremony, for this meaningful uh, introduction today on all issues and challenges faced by the Waka region. I will, will not go back uh, to those issues and challenges. I will go directly to present our solution, our innovation today, Transcend. Uh, first, I would like to say is that Aegis, in partnership with the Taras and Finance for Impact, is really proud uh, to have been selected by the jury among the five finalists and uh, to present and introduce our proposed innovative solution, Transcend. So let's see what is Transcend. Transcend is a solution we have conceived all together to transcend the port and national boundaries. And as such, provide them a tool on their journey, on the journey of ports and states towards their sustainable future. Our proposed innovative uh, solutions aims to address one of the main well-known challenges and needs within the Waka region, restore the alongshore sediment transport and therefore mitigates impacts of the seaports. Next, please. We strongly believe, and I will use for that purpose the same examples and uh, Professor uh, Mr. Christensen as uh, a port of Nouachat. Uh, we strongly believe this can be performed thanks to the implementation of a proven and scalable solution, a transnational sand bypassing scheme. Uh, proven because the bypassing scheme we are proposing will rely on dredging technology to transfer the sediments which are captured updrift or in navigational channels of the seaports to the down drift eroded areas. Other bypassing techniques, more automatic, do exist, but we strongly believe that dredging offers also the flexibility and the unique opportunity to be first scalable in time. Next, please. To cope with annual variation and more important with climate change impacts, but also scalable specially. Uh, next, please as the same tool can be operated in most seaports of the Waka region, subsequently from Nouachot up to Cotonou or Lomé. And this brings us to where the main innovation stands, capturing scale benefits by means of a regional cooperation between ports and countries by operating a combined dredging capacity through a public-private dredging consortium. Next, please. As said by Mr. Christensen, no one can resolve it alone. So therefore, this transnational issue of longshore sediment transport can only be resolved by a transnational approach, which will benefit to ports, governments and communities. The idea behind is that the dredging capacity will be principally funded through a public-private pooled dredging fund, fund financed by port operators, port authorities and other stakeholders. This consortium will handle uh, jointly port maintenance dredging and sand enrichment to simultaneously mitigate erosion first and ensure continuous safe port operation. This will obviously result in an attractive financial impact because of the mutualization of funds, which will generate cost savings. But what is really key for the success of this solution is also setting up of an innovative governance and financing scheme. Such governance, for example, already exists in France, uh, but only to a national extent with the GEU dragage. And uh, we look forward to implement it at a regional scale. And for this, uh, we shall remind only three principles to ensure uh, the the completion of this governance. There shall be a robust, independent and balanced governance regulated by 
an international institution, the role of this governance will be to compute cost scenarios and reach an agreement uh, with all parties for the management of the mutualized funds and last but not least manage the execution of the work. So in conclusion, it's a lot of information, but if you shall keep in mind only four reasons why you, we, you shall strongly believe in our solution transcend as much as we do, it's not only because it's an innovative solution, but also because it's a solution ready to implement and proven to be feasible in terms of technology and governance, a flexible solution which can be adapted to national context, and last but not least, which is going to benefit to all with long-term positive impacts for ports, governments and communities, thanks to a mutualization of funds, which will also generate significant cost savings. Thank you, Maya, and I give you back. Thank you very much, Eric, for being really to, to the second uh, in your presentation. Excellent, well done, thank you so much. Very innovative, um, interesting solution. I'm moving now to the second proposal that was prepared by a team of experts from three institutes. On behalf of the team, the presentation will be made by Frederick Hadoff. Fried is an expert in flood and drought risk management at the Dutch engineering firm HKV. The proposal is entitled WAC App. This is an application to explore the impact of coastal intervention. Fried, over to you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yes, uh, hello everyone. So my name is Frederick Hudhoff. I'm a consultant and re researcher at HKV in the field of river and coastal management. Um, I'm going to present our proposed innovation backup, which is an interactive online coastal planning tool. Uh, I will show that the tool is simple to use and can really help solving uh, the coastal management challenges that countries in the West African region are facing. Um, but just first, I briefly wish to introduce our team, which is a combination of specialists from HKV and IHE Delft. Um, HKV is a Dutch engineering and consulting and research firm focusing on the fields of uh, flood risk and water resource management. And from HKV, we have involved Vincent Fauk, Roy Dachenvoorde, and myself. And then uh, IHE Delft is the world's largest educational institute entirely dedicated to water management. And from IHE, we have uh, Professor Dano Rolfink and Ali Daskai. Um, next, please. So, the solution that we present is Backup. Uh, it's an interactive web application that uses innovative technologies uh, to rapidly calculate and map the impacts of interventions along the coast. It will be open access, free of charge to its users and operate um, uh, entirely in the cloud. Most importantly though, it will be user-friendly and intuitive so that for the first time, an advanced coastal morphology model becomes available to everyone. Um, we feel that by bringing such a tool closer to planners, decision makers, uh, and other stakeholders, better plans can be made. Uh, VACAP combines validated technologies. Uh, we have Shoreline S, a versatile coastal evolution model developed by, uh, by IHE, together with Google Earth Engine, uh, a platform that operates in the cloud and that offers a wealth of global data sets, uh, in particular satellite imagery. To demonstrate its strength and facilitate its use, we will also prepare a, a tutorial of WACAP showing its application to cases in uh, St. Louis, Sen uh, Senegal, or um, Lekki, Nigeria. So both locations are also indicated on the map here. Um, several components of our innovation have already been developed and tested, which allows us to have a first version ready for a moderate budget of around $50,000. Uh, a more elaborated and expanded version would take another nine months to develop and a budget about three times as large. Um, next, please. So how does WACAP work? Well, first on a map, you select an area of interest. Uh, this can be an area of several kilometers to uh, up to about hundred kilometers. Then in step two, WACAP will automatically detect the existing shoreline shown here as the, the red line. In step three, you can select from a menu certain types of interventions and place them on the map. Uh, for example, a sand nourishment and a hard structure, which could represent a port development, for example, as also shown here. Then four, in WACAP, or WACAP will then calculate the impact 
of the interventions on the coast, shown here now as a green line. This can be done for the medium and the long term. Um, it can also take into account the influence of uh, river mouths and sandbars or islands uh, along the coast. Then in step five and six, you can repeat the entire process, um, adjust interventions, calculate again the shoreline and optimize your plan. Uh, note that in this image, now the positions of the heart structure and the nourishment are reversed. So um, yeah, you can do this either to find a good solution to a planning challenge or uh, to use it as a communication tool that demonstrates possible coastal impacts. So in summary, um, WACAP addresses the issues that are uh, really at the core of the WACAP program. And we believe that this application can help in terms of one, stakeholder involvement, uh, two, in the early sorting and exploration of viable solutions for port developments, and three, in finding effective solutions to mitigate coastal erosion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Fried, for this very concise presentation. I just want to remind the audience that if you have any question, any feedback, please feel free to send them through the chat. We're monitoring the chat. We might answer them directly. And, or if we have time at the end, we might be able to pick up a couple of questions that we will ask our candidate to reply. Let me now turn on to the third proposal that was prepared by a Belgium firm, IMDC, specialized in water resource management, coastal port, and marine resources. The proposal was prepared by a team of three experts and will be presented by Annelise Bollet on behalf of the team. Annelise is an experienced coastal engineer at IMDC. The proposal is, an, is entitled B Sand, the Blue Energy System for Sand Bypass. Annelise, over to you. Thanks, Maria. So, as you all know, port infrastructure causes an interruption of the littoral drift. This causes sedimentation on the upstream side and the port access channel and causes erosion downdrift. Also, ports have a high energy demand with often high CO2 emissions associated. b offers a solution for this. Next slide, please. So b is unique since it will be the first sand bypass system in the world to use blue energy which is locally available. Bicent is also feasible since it builds on our experience of a number of past and ongoing projects, both in our home market as well as worldwide. So how does it work? The aim is to restore the natural sediment supply. So on this slide, you see the possible application for the port of Cotonou in Benin. On the left, you see the first element, the fixed sun bypass. It's positioned on the upstream side where the breakwater creates a sediment reservoir. So it consists of a jetty with pumps and the clear water intake. Then sediment, um, suspended sediment is pumped across the port towards a discharge location, typically downstream of the port at the location where you need to mitigate uh, erosion. The energy needed for the sand bypass is produced locally at the breakwater. So on the right, you see that a hybrid wave energy converter is integrated in the structure. So it can produce clean blue energy. These wave energy converters, um, it's low risk because we propose a hybrid wave energy converter, so a combination of two well-established technologies, uh, so air and water turbines. This has the advantage that it gives a high they can operate in a wide range of conditions. The integration in the breakwater also um, offers the benefit that is easily accessible for maintenance. The excess energy, so the energy you don't need for the sand bypass, is, can be used for the port operations. Also good to know is that all those different components of this sand, they are adaptable. So it means that it can be scaled to the local and national uh, conditions. On the next slide, you see that, well, the impact of B sand uh, is mainly limiting the downstream erosion, but on the other hand, it also limits energy requirements and the related operating costs. Here you see some numbers for the case study of uh, Cotonou. We calculated that over a period of 30 years, typically you would be able to save $42 million 
by using B sand compared to traditional sand bypassing means of dredging. And this includes both investments and maintenance costs of the system. With regards to electricity production, on top of that, you can save another 9 million because you will be using locally produced blue energy. And then also, um, you will save 10,000 tons of CO2 emissions, um, which is, of course, a nice effort in view of climate change. And then all these numbers, they even don't include uh, many other um, co-benefits, um, which can be environmental, social, and economic. The timeline for implementation of beach sand shows that after one to two years of studies and field investigations, permitting can start and tendering and construction can go ahead from, let's say, year three on. And then, of course, operation of beach sand can start immediately afterwards. Beach sand is sustainable. It will be using locally available materials and blue energy to restore the natural uh, processes. And then in the end, it will also become a locally run business, for example, uh, by port authorities or uh, other investors. So that's in short, be sent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annelies. Excellent. Uh, let me move on to our fourth proposal uh, for today. Uh, this was prepared by a team of experts from six firms. Uh, Craig Jones will be presenting on behalf of the team. Craig is a principal ocean and environmental engineer at Integral Consulting. The proposal is entitled Multipurpose Technology for an Integrated Solution to Coastal Erosion and Sediment Management. Craig, over to you. Merci. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. It's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to be a part of this, this wonderful WACA effort and uh, the amazing panelists that have presented already. And thank you very much to all the WACA jurors as well for the opportunity to be here. I'm presenting on behalf of Integral Consulting. Our partners are Resolute Marine Energy, SAFEC in Senegal, Saint Marcel in the US, Medusa in the Netherlands, and Ulam Rooney, who is at the National Institute of Marine Science and Technology in Tunisia. As we know, coastal erosion is due to a number of factors. The limited sediment supply many times to the coastal areas, sea level rise and climate change that we're gonna be dealing with over the long term. So what we see is that a toolbox, a toolkit of many different tools are needed to adapt to rising seas and increasing coastal hazards throughout the world and in particular in West Africa. Next. So as part of Coast Protect Africa, we have prepared an innovative, integrated, and, and group of sustainable solutions to help mitigate coastal erosion in market countries. One of the first is wave energy conversion, which I'll focus on today, beach and dune stabilization, improving sediment conveyance to the coast, beneficial reuse of sediment, and groundwater management to help reduce saline intrusion, which is impacting many of these areas and also ties into coastal erosion. By finding the right toolkit to address regional areas, we can really start to combat and adapt to coastal erosion so that we can protect livelihoods, we can protect uh, the environment, and protect uh, sustainable economic growth in areas. Next. So the project benefits that we're looking at include using wave energy that we can reduce the wave energy to the coast to reduce overall coastal hazards and coastal erosion. <clears throat> it gives us infrastructure protection for everything from fishing infrastructure to port and harbor infrastructure to homes that we've seen in some of the earlier videos. Our technology additionally converts wave energy to fresh water and electricity using oscillating wave energy converters offshore shown in the bottom figure here. The local project we're looking at is in Senegal and looking in particular at erosion mitigation near the proposed Port de Futur in, in Diane development. Our estimated cost is about $30 million for this project. However, with the water production that we're looking at from these wave energy conversion, it plugs directly into a $1 billion a year addressable market of water in West Africa overall. These solutions are scalable and applicable to many different regions. Next slide. As I mentioned, we're focusing uh, south of Dakar and in Diane. Here in this region, we see increased coastal erosion as we, we do through many areas. It's also an arid region that has water pressure as well. 
by working with local uh, engineering firms and local communities, we can deploy these wave energy converters down coast of ports where erosion is expected to be the highest and reduce wave energy. The first phases of these projects would include feasibility studies to look at not only environmental and social impacts, but to look at the technical feasibility and economic feasibility of these projects and help build local capacity. Stage two would be a pilot plant deployment to deploy wave energy converters to produce fresh water and demonstrate their effectiveness in reducing erosion. Finally, a commercial scale deployment could involve up to 26 modules for water production on the order of 4,000 cubic meters per day and the protection of coastal area on the order of kilometers. <laughs> Again, this addresses a $1 billion per year market in water and water needs throughout uh, the West African countries. Also, when used in conjunction with some of the other technologies you've heard about today, such as sand bypassing, these can provide a good comprehensive solution to erosion in these areas. We're looking at funding mechanisms that include primarily public and private partnerships to help fund these projects and ensure that they're sustainable over the long term. Merci beaucoup, and we look forward to discussing our projects further with all of you. Thank you so much, Craig. Uh, thank you. Let me move on to our last uh, presentation for today. This uh, proposal was prepared by a team of experts from five firms. On behalf of the team, Tom Wilms will be making the presentation. Tom is an expert in nature-based solution in the coastal areas at Whitehaven. The proposal is entitled System Approach for Port Development. Tom, over to you. Maria, thank you very much for your introduction. Good day, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to present our innovation here at the demo day of uh, the WACA program. As Maria already mentioned, I'm Tom Wilms and I work as an integrated coastal zone management expert at Witteveen and Bos, a Dutch engineering company. I believe West Africa needs a systematic approach for sustainable port development. I will tell you why. Just have a look as, at this photograph taken at the port of Lomé. It clearly shows the erosion caused by the port at the back. Other impacts of ports are often degradation of the environment and water quality. At the same time, uh, ports are vital for economy. Port developments are complex uh, and it was already mentioned by various speakers like Mr. Abe Delphine Onchu. And to make them sustainable, it is really complex. There is no easy solution. There is not one magic pill you can just take and solve everything. To get to a sustainable port, it is a tough journey and it needs understanding of the systems the port is in. And every player needs to play their own role. You can leave a few players out at the start because it seems easier, but along the road, you will get problems. And the people you left at the start, they are most probably the ones that can solve those problems. So as a consortium, we believe that our approach is the guide for the journey through the complexity towards sustainable ports. Now, have it, now let us have a look at that systematic approach we want to follow. And after that, we will explain it with one example in West Africa. Next, please. Our approach consists of five repeating steps, achieving more detail during every cycle. Let's spend a few words per step. In the first step, we focus on the problems and the plans. In the second step, we will analyze the critical systems. We see the four which are critical according to us, economy, environment, society, and governance. In the third step, we will investigate the functions, the values, and the benefits of the area. In the fourth step, alternatives are developed and they can consist of all the solutions you already heard. They can Im be implemented in our approach. And in the last step, solutions are selected. And, though, and that is also the input for the next cycle. In this approach, the active participation of all stakeholders and experts is key. Our approach is applicable at every location. And as the systems will differ at every location, the outcome will differ as well. So we will find the best solution for that spot. 
Now let's have a look at LACI in Nigeria, where our systematic approach resulted in a port with a sandbar breakwater. Next, please. Here you see the result of our design and construction works. It is a relatively small port and it is at the yellow ship. Let's go through the five steps of our approach for this port development. First, we analyzed the plans of this port that needed to be constructed. We also learned from problems of existing ports already along the West African coast and there expensive rock breakwaters were covered with sand within several years after construction. So in the second step, we looked into the systems, we analyzed them. And at LACI, the focus was on the environmental system and specifically the coastal processes along the Gulf of Guinea. Also here, at this location, there is a large sand transport along the coast. And in this image, that one moves from top to bottom. Thirdly, the functions were investigated. The port functions, as well as the existing functions like housing and recreation, you see at the bottom of the image. After that, solutions were developed. And here at LACI, we started to design and finally build with the sand that was available and use less rock. An integral part of our solution is the sand nourishment you see at the bottom. That nourishment prevents erosion and negative impacts uh, that would other, otherwise have occurred. And the last fifth step is to select the best solutions based on their impacts. So as I said, we use more sand and we use less rock. This resulted in faster construction, less cost, which was good for economy, and as we use less rock, less rock was transported. And, and because of that, there were less traffic accidents and less air pollution, which is beneficial for society. <laughs> Through this approach, the solutions were inclusive and integrated from the start. So to wrap up, the journey to a sustainable West African port, it is tough and there is not a magic pill. So as a consortium, we believe that all players need to be involved and join this journey. And our approach is the, set, is the systematic guide through complexity of all systems. So if you also believe in this approach for sustainable port development, we are more than pleased to start this journey together with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, excellent Tom. Uh, that concludes the five presentations, and uh, it's 11 o'clock, so I'm going to now turn over to the much-awaited um, award ceremony. Uh, we will not have time. We wanted to have a few minutes for to take questions uh, live, but we're, we're running out of time. So we're monitoring the chat, and we will be answering all the questions via, via chat. Let me now turn over so to uh, the award ceremony that will be hosted by Imad Fahouri, who is joining us from Jordan. Uh, Imad will be announcing the winners. Uh, Imad is a director for infrastructure, finance, PPP, and guarantees at the World Bank. Before joining the World Bank Group, Imad served in the Jordanian government as Minister of Planning and International <coughs> Cooperation, as Minister of Public Sector Development, and as a Minister of State. So we're very excited to have Imad with us. And um, Imad, over to you. Thank you. Uh, you may want to unmute. You are still on mute. We cannot hear you. We can see you. We saw you, you unmuted your button, but Maybe let's try again. Is it the case that maybe Tom needs to mute? Uh... Yes. Imad, can you speak? 
just to see if we can hear you. Oh, no, we still cannot hear you. Um. All right, while I let me suggest the following, maybe while we're waiting for uh, uh, for uh, to fix uh, Imad's mic, I suggest we had um, we had in the closing session uh, an intervention from Karim C and Simeon Ewi. So I'm going to suggest that we run the the intervention of Karim C for now, um, and uh, and then we'll we'll go on to the award ceremony because I'm I'm very conscious about the time. So Sergio, if you can run, let me uh, Karim C. So is I, some of you may already know him. He's uh, best known as an Afropreneur. He's known for launching in 2010, one of the top five African innovation hubs called Joko Labs. He devoted a large part of his time to develop a global business platform to support African entrepreneurs and innovators. Karim was appointed to the French Presidential Council for Africa by President Emmanuel Macron and to the Senegalese Digital Council by President Macky Sall. So over to you, Karim, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be there for uh, closing remarks for this uh, WACA event. Um, I'm an innovator first, uh, serial entrepreneurs who have found innovation, have launched innovation, who have support innovation uh, through the Chocolab Network uh, launched 10 years ago, around 10 countries now. Um, um, my background is also uh, being engaged uh, for the um, the, the, the private sector organization for also advising the President Macron in his uh, Conseil Présidentiel pour l'Afrique. Yes. Uh, I'm a member of the Conseil National du Numérique well. uh, who is advising the, the President Macky Sall and I'm we very pleased that Senegal is part okay. of the WACA uh, initiative. Um, being uh, involved in Africa and particularly in Mali, Senegal and West Africa uh, I, I know that what it, it means to, to face challenge in this country uh, when we launch innovation. And I believe and I have seen for 10 years that uh, it's uh, uh, incredible how there is energy and there is capacity with young innovators to do things and build from the ground. And something perhaps particularly is that, uh, and perhaps specifically when we talk about port, is how we deal with nature. Uh, one of the great challenges we have now is uh, in this transition world, how we will deal with it, how we will do things differently. We have built port without uh, including those issues of climate change, of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the different uh, coastal uh, issue, um, and, and how we face that now uh, in this uh, world. The COVID have given us uh, something very interesting in how we need to build innovation and, and actually the World Bank is opening to it when he called this innovation and open it to all the different stakeholders, either from the university, either from the private sector, either from the public sector, either from the civil society or different uh, uh, consulting firms or different stakeholders. But simply uh, put in, uh, this is the open innovation approach. And from the COVID, we have discovered that to face those challenges, this is more um, some issue we have to face together. It's not only uh, for Senegal, it's not only for, for Togo, it's not only for uh, even France or China. Uh, we are all in the same boat. And when we are in, this, uh, in that approach, we need to exchange our knowledge. We need to work together to emerge from new innovation and new way of thinking. You know, uh, um, Einstein used to say that you can't uh, change a situation when you have the same thinking or when you create it. So we change the perspective and uh, with the support of uh, the World Bank. Congratulations to all those who have uh, those very interesting proposition. 
Uh, there is no winner. There is something, something starting. And I believe that if we join all our forces, uh, it's just a start and we'll launch uh, very new innovation that can have a very great impact. So thank you all. And uh, I hope we'll follow up together to build a build big community of innovators that will work together in an open innovation approach to create change and have a big impact. Take care. Bye. Okay, so that was a very inspiring uh, intervention by Karim C., the Afropreneur um, in West Africa. Let me now turn on to Imad and see if we have managed to fix the microphone issue. Imad, can you join us? All right, we seem not to be able to to reach to him, he's connecting from Jordan. I don't know, maybe having some, some connection issues. Uh, yes, we. I believe he has some connection issues. I am, I am not sure. I believe he might is trying to dial in right now. Exactly. Um, I was going to yes. propose. There's a phone uh, connection, no detail that he can use. Yes. So he's 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 trying to dial in right now, and we are um, co oh. coordinating. Excellent. Okay, can I ask meantime Sergio to reshow one of the videos that we show at the beginning that was absolutely magnificent about the Waka work when, when, while, we, while we get Imad uh, back on the line? Thank you, Sergio. Ma Maria, perhaps yes? also for the audience to say a few words about the Quality Infrastructure Initiative. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please. Thank you for joining in, Fatuma. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I think this is really a good opportunity to highlight the fact that the World Bank and the government of Japan has established this partnership that, has, that is also contributing to this initiative. So I would like to thank all the organizers for, for, for bringing the quality infrastructure initiative into, into the conversation. And the partnership actually has accomplished um, a number of uh, project preparation and implementation support, as well as dissemination uh, and this is really related to the G20 principle for quality um, of infrastructure. And maybe just as a reminder, mention the six uh, principles which are maintaining uh, the impact. Um, excuse me, maximizing the positive impact of infrastructure to achieve sustainable and uh, growth and development. So that's that's the first. The second is raising economic efficiency in view of the life cycle cost. And the third is integrating environmental considerations in infrastructure investment. Uh, the fourth, building resilience against natural disasters and other risks. And the fifth, integrating social consideration in infrastructure investment. Finally, strengthening infrastructure governance. So looking at these six principles, I think we can all agree that you know this is actually what we're talking about in this in this competition through the angle of innovation. So it was a great opportunity for us to support uh, this this exciting uh, initiative. So thank you and thanks Benoit and colleagues and and also the participants for for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Fatuma. Let me see now. So if we have, uh, we managed to reconnect Imad uh, with us. All right. I can see you, Imad. Are you able to? Hello. Can you hear oh, me now? Oh, finally. Perfect. Fantastic. Yes, please go ahead, Imad. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the WACA community. It's indeed a great pleasure and an honor to, to join such a distinguished group for such an important uh, program. Uh, at the World Bank, we recognize that poverty alleviation and shared prosperity and achieving the SDGs cannot be addressed adequately without countries having adequate, resilient, inclusive, and, infra and efficient infrastructure. This is about the ports, the energy, the roads, the waterways, and more. And we know that improving connectivity is central to infrastructure mission to achieve growth, inclusion, and sustainability. 
by connecting people, firms, lagging regions, and markets. However, we also acutely are aware that we need to better adapt to climate change and that renewable energy and nature-based solutions must be part of the way we do business going forward. Therefore, um, at the infrastructure finance PPPs um, and guarantees global practice uh, to which I'm the, the director and through the different global platforms we have like the quality infrastructure investment uh, partnership, we very much welcome this call for innovation. The QII uh, partnership with the government of Japan that IPG is honored to house is exactly the tool to initiate innov innovation. We have provided um, uh, $70,000 towards this call for innovation process and some of the prices. And we wanna also thank the Nordic Development Fund for co-sponsoring this initiative that helps engage the private sector. QII got very interested by the WACA program proposal as it provided a very different and innovative approach to how we invest in resilient infrastructure. And this is the type of in initiative we would like to see replicated. Um, IPG as a global practice has been working with several West and Central African countries at, uh, as well as at the regional level to support building the necessary enabling environment and ecosystems for private sector participation through PPPs and, and the crowding in of commercial financing or supporting World Bank Group on PCM efforts, private capital mobilization, or supporting pipeline development of bankable projects uh, and diagnosing infrastructural needs, funding and financing reforms and requirements and overall infrastructure governance requirements and addressing the binding constraints to enable private sector participation through the core diagnostic, the InfraSAP uh, that we lead and deploy, uh, like the ECOWAS one, and, and supporting then specific projects through financial structuring and credit enhancements. And based on what I heard today, uh, ideas for the financing schemes and the infrastructure fund is the kind of instruments that IPG has been facilitating to establish. So at the QII, we, we very much, um, uh, put an emphasis on innovation and even more on replicability of the proposed innovation. And I would like to, to, to say that IPG commits to working with the WACA program to explore cooperating on maybe detailing the feasibilities of some of the innovations that have been proposed. I think this will help the countries and partners to mobilize financing from the private sector for an environmentally and, 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 uh, and socially sustainable and resilient infrastructure. Specifically, I would like to mention, um, we would like maybe to invite the program to use and apply uh, through our global platforms like the PF and the QII partnership and, and working with the CMUs um, and the WACA program to provide support to implement some of the ideas. For, for example, QII can provide support to implement some of those ideas that have been uh, qualified and, and, and proposed and, and, and that one. Uh, PF can help probably develop some of the upstream business cases for uh, some of the PPP ideas. We could also consider technical support to the WACA finance uh, marketplace for PPPs or the private sector catalytic fund. And, and, and finally consider you know, capacity building for training on developing coastal resilience uh, types of PPPs. So we look forward to, to continuing our partnership and, and exploring avenues for uh, further collaboration. And, and before I, I jump into the announcement of the winners, I'm sure everybody is, is looking for that. I wanna just stress that the five finalists that we heard today are clearly all top innovators um, and, and uh, that will help advance the issue of coastal erosion stemming from, from ports. Three winners obviously were uh, chosen and I know the decision was not easy um, to make uh, that was made by the high level jury and I want to thank all of them for the great efforts they've done. And as Peter mentioned earlier, the evaluation criteria were not only innovation. I want to remind you that it, it also looked at feasibility, adaptability to the national context, impact, co-benefits and implementation readiness. And based on that, that's how we selected the top three. The three winners will obviously receive uh, some cash prices in the form of a contract to further develop their ideas. And regarding the remaining uh, two, we are committing also to explore their ideas further with the WACA technical team. As I said before, uh, uh, IPG uh, is, is keenly going to further investigate these ideas that we have heard today 
and working with the WACA team to see how we can further uh, support them. Um, without any further delay, I will go now to the winners, starting with the third uh, prize. So um, in the absence of any drum rolls, the third prize goes to the systems approach for port uh, development by the Witteveen, CDR, Boscalis, PINAF, Wetlands, uh, represented by Tom Wilms. Uh, allow me to invite Mr. Tom Wilms uh, to say maybe a few words on behalf of your team. Um, yes. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go okay. ahead, Tom. Good. And congratulations. Uh, start my video. Oh, does it? Yeah. Hopefully. Thank you very much for uh, selecting us to uh, top three. Uh, we're honored to be uh, the finalist, uh, and we're really looking forward to go into next meetings and conversations with you, with the people in the countries to implement our systematic systems approach towards sustainable uh, port development. It's a journey we have to walk together. So I'm really happy that we can start with this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Uh, fantastic uh, proposal and I look forward to seeing it uh, through. Um, Allow me now to move to the second uh, place. Um, and the second prize goes to Transcend, the transnational bypass scheme funded by a public private dredging fund uh, by Aegis, Deltares, and Finance for Impact, uh, represented by Eric Fernagus. If you allow me, uh, Eric, to invite you to say a few words on behalf of your team. And again, congratulations to you and the team. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fakori. Thank you a lot. Uh, I would like to uh, well to thank you, the Waka Committee, for this journey. It has been a, a, a very nice and wonderful journey from uh, April to, to now, in difficult times, but a very wonderful journey. Uh, I would like to say that it's uh, obviously not. It's really a teamwork, and I would like to thank the team behind us, uh, Deltares Finance for Impact, and all the people who have been involved also. NG side, and I really, we really look forward to uh, uh, developing this innovation with you and see how we can address it in a timely manner. Thank you all. Thank you, Eric. Congratulations again. And uh, allow me now to move to first place. And uh, the first place uh, prize goes to WAC APP application uh, to explore the impacts of coastal interventions by HKV. UNESCO, Delphit Institute, and uh, we, they're represented, of course, by uh, Frederick Hothoff. May I invite um, uh, Frederick to say a few words? And congratulations uh, uh, to, to all your team uh, from the World Bank Group. Well, um, thank you. Um, Surprised, good news. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. First of all, already uh, to, to be among these, these five uh, finalists. Um, so yeah, what can I say? Um, so yeah, thank you for the, the trust that you put in our idea. Um, we, are, we are excited to, to dig in, uh, to get going. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I, I speak on behalf of the team to say, well, we're honored, obviously. Um, not in the least because of the other strong ideas that have been proposed. So yeah, I do also hope that some, if not all of those can be put into practice and uh, well, maybe even see that they could make use of our innovation. So of course, that's the ultimate goal. Um, thanks again, uh, merci beaucoup. Um, thank you, Frederick. Uh, finally, let me give uh, special recognition to IMDC and Integral for their ideas they were also great. I'm sorry uh, they did not uh, win uh, prizes this time. Nevertheless, I know that the WACA technical team is going to be very keen to talk to you further. Congratulations uh, to, the, to the five uh, proposals and congratulations to the top three winners. And uh, back to you, Maria, and thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Imad, and wonderful congratulations to all uh, those who won to the top three candidates, all the candidates, in fact, uh, all, all the 
ideas were really brilliant. And la now I'm going to hand over to Simeon uh, for the last, the closing remarks for today's event. Simeon is our regional director for sustainable development for West Africa. Before that, Simeon was the director of the Food and Agriculture Department at the World Bank. And before joining the bank, he was the, for 15 years in the consultative group on international agriculture research, better known as CGIR. So Simeon, over to you for our final, uh, mm -hmm. final remarks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Maria. I want to make sure that uh, you hear me well. Very well. We hear you and see you. All right. So, so thank you again, Maria. Um, Thank you, uh, Imad, and uh, I also would like to thank all the uh, uh, members of the jury. This was a, a difficult uh, uh, exercise because I did find all the presentations to be excellent. I didn't want to be part of the jury because I wouldn't know, you know, how to select. It is so exciting. So congratulations to to all. Let me also take opportunity to to thank uh, Karim, uh, who talked earlier, for giving us uh, uh, an inspiring uh, uh, speech. Innovation is uh, a key ingredient of success in transforming uh, a livelihood. So dear colleagues and uh, participants, uh, I would like to again, uh, congratulate all the innovators who participated in this call for innovation. Uh, your participation uh, demonstrate that uh, you are committed to sustainability and proof that you want to contribute your wisdom and expertise. Thank you uh, immensely. And uh, a special and big congratulations to the finalists and to the three, uh, the three winners. What I saw today convinced me that uh, together we can build sustainable ports without undermining the resilience of the coastal ecosystem and our community. A special thanks to the quality infrastructure investment uh, uh, partnership for making it possible, uh, the, the, for making possible this call for innovation and for helping us raise awareness on the need to pay deeper attention to the sustainability of infrastructure. This call was made possible by the Nordic Fund, a key worker partner that provided 13 million US dollars to design and operate the worker platform, facilitate our scale up uh, efforts and co-finance operations in Benin and Senegal. This call is a reflection of worker's crucial role in convening a platform where partners bring uh, 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 together knowledge and finance as well as dialogue. Today, uh, we saw how the private sector can be an essential partner in seeking funding for the identification, preparation, and implementation of green, gray, nature-based solutions. We know it has not always been easy to get the private sector to contribute to resilience. But we must find that uh, Swiss sports where private founders understand why this investment makes sense, you know, uh, are important. I strongly encourage coalitions that put in, in place innovative financing uh, instruments such as the uh, public-private partnership. And, and uh, uh, Imad mentioned some examples in the bank. Uh, we have guarantees and bonds as an example to support the management of coastal areas. Let me remind you why the coastal resilience agenda is important for the World Bank Group. West Africa, coastal areas host about one third of the region's population and generate some 56% of its GDP. This coast must stay healthy and productive to create opportunities economic opportunities, build resilient uh, communities and transform livelihood. Our economic analysis uh, indicate that in 2017, coastal erosion, flooding, and pollution in the coastal areas of Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, and Togo cost 
some 3.8 billion US dollars, which is the equivalent of 5.3% of the four countries' GDP in 2017. That's a huge amount of resources. Myself, I'm from Cote d'Ivoire, and I can perfectly relate to uh, Professor Osho's statement earlier. Inaction will mean loss of economic opportunities and shattered coastal lives. Recently, hundreds of our youth have perished in the Atlantic Ocean. Why has this happened? Or why is this, is, uh, this is happening? Because they tried to escape poverty and took a risky journey over the open seas to migrate to Europe. Many of them from coastal communities had lost hope. Fish catch is dwindling. Homes and assets were uh, swallowed by floods and there's no alternative but to try to escape the West Africa coastal lines. Similarly, with climate change, rising seas and salty groundwater are invading the agricultural lands, considerably reducing soil productivity, incomes, and food security. Projects are in place, and uh, we have the worker platform to bring solutions and finance to scale our project. However, it will take more partners, more partners to fully realize this transformation. As said earlier by, by my colleague, Debbie Wetzel, in her opening remarks, we need West African leaders to commit to institutions and mechanisms for long-term cross-border cooperation for the sustainable management of shared coastal resources. Similarly, regional academia and think tanks must pull together their knowledge and invite the youth. And finally, we must engage in communities, not only as beneficiaries, but as partners that can set priorities, influence policies, and implement investment program that truly respond to the need of the people. We are living in challenging times now with COVID-19 pandemic and related socioeconomic crisis threatening already vulnerable, the livelihood of vulnerable people. The economic fallout could drive up to 40 million people in extreme poverty in Africa in 2020 and cost some 115 billion US dollars in output losses and erase at least five years of progress in fighting poverty. Now, more than ever, we need to get better at supporting countries. The worker program is our flagship for regionally integrated and nationally executed action. We look forward to joining hands with countries, partners, institutions, and especially coastal community, communities to bring change under the water, the WACA program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Simeon. It's now time to close our session. Uh, while we say goodbye to everybody, we're just going to run a video that has the five uh, ideas all combined in one quick video uh, while people are logging off. Thank you again. Congratulations to everybody and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. On 28th February 2020, the World Bank Group launched a call for innovation under the West Africa Coastal Areas Management Program to bridge the gap between innovators and port developers' owners to build sustainable and integrated coastal management. The Waka Call for Innovation received 22 high-quality submissions across four thematic categories. After a thorough process of deliberation and grading of 12 long-listed candidates, these five submissions were shortlisted for the final round to pitch in front of a virtual panel of judges at the Waka Demo Day scheduled for 17th November 2020. An idea to establish a regional public-private dredging consortium to provide dredging capacity for all partners' countries and implement a transboundary sand bypassing scheme. 
and an idea to create an interactive online-based application to assess the effects of coastal interventions and enable communication between decision-makers and stakeholders. An idea to install a marine energy-powered artificial sand bypassing system to restore natural sediment supply and create a cost-effective satellite-based remote monitoring tool to oversee and manage risks to critical infrastructure. An idea to utilize a combination of beach and dune stabilization technologies, multifunctional wave systems and management techniques to restore sediment supply and increase climate resilience. A submission focused on introducing a stakeholder-inclusive approach to shift the focus of port development from business and engineering to an integrated environmental, economic and social perspective and promote sustainable coastal development. These five shortlisted candidates will pitch in front of a panel of judges on Demo Day, scheduled for 18th November 2020.